So we're here today with a college tour of Gardner-Webb University. We are with first-year head coach uh, Jim Chester. So thank you very much for Pleasure. having Welcome. us on campus. So it's first-year coach here at Gardner-Webb, but definitely yes. not a first-year coach. No, uh, no, no. I'm going to cheat a little bit here because this is you got quite a lengthy resume. Um, so this is going to be your first season here. Last year you were at Barton. Mm -hmm. You won Conference Carolina's Coach of the Year. Uh, you turned that team around. It was actually the biggest turnaround for a Division II team in the nation. You were at Lock Haven University, which was a 13-win team when you took them over, and you turned them into a 32-win team just a few seasons later. So I guess, first question is, what's the secret? How are you turning programs around? It's, uh, I, I wish I had a magic wand that could show you exactly how, how that goes on, but um, I think the most important thing is that it, it takes a village. Um, this is not about me, it never has been. Um, nothing that we do as a program is, is about me. Um, I just think that, you know, maybe I've been around a little longer and, and, and screwed enough things up before that um, I think we're able to get, get to the root of the problem um, as, a, as a whole and do what we need to do. Um, I, I truly believe that everything that we do bases around three words. And, th and this, is what, this is what we have been able to do to be successful. Um, it all the stops that I've been at, and that includes Penn State Greater Allegheny, which I probably had. three national championships there, correct? We, we, we had a good run there. We right. really did, and, and we had some great young men and great assistant coaches and great people around us, and, and, but we didn't have a home field. We practiced in a parking lot. Um, I, I can tell you stories of on stories of, of you know being blue collar, which is one of the things I'm going to elaborate on. But what's really important, the programs that we're involved with, is that we're selfless, we're relentless, and we're blue collar. Um, everything that we do, we have an understanding that it affects somebody else. The guy next to us is more important than ourself, and that has to do with our coaches. Has everything to do everyone that's involved in our program, players athletic training, our strength coach, that, that is at the forefront that we are going to do for others before we do for ourselves. And we're going to be relentless. It's extremely important to me that everything that we attack, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's going to be on the field, everything that we do, we're going to be relentless. We're not going to be out of control. We're just going to have that mentality and, that, and we're going to approach everything that we're, we're, we're just going to be able to handle anything that comes our way. I mean, the most important one is being blue collar. And uh, having an understanding that if we want to get something accomplished, we've got to put the time in to do it. That's where instead of being able to hashtag grind, we're going to really go and grind. So I, we put a big emphasis on, you know what I mean? You've got to be self-motivated. You have to understand what it really takes to be a special player. And you've got to be blue collar. You've got to work when no one else is looking. And when it's time to practice, like we're going to work at a level that you've never worked at before and have an understanding of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how it's going to make you be the best player that you can be, in turn, making us the best team that we can be. So when you took the job here in June, mm -hmm. uh, you said, quote, Gardner-Webb is a special place, and I felt that when I first set foot on campus. Can you elaborate on that for us? This opportunity um, came in front of me, um, and... Our family drove out here and, and was able to pull into campus and have an understanding of what Gardner-Webb is. Gardner-Webb is an extremely, extremely special place because it has a strong Christian culture at the Division I level with an opportunity to do special things with the facilities that we have. And being able to step foot on campus and interact with the people here that just have a really, really, really special feeling and meaning to what Gardner Webb is just it blew me away so you come into this year taking over a program that's competed well in the big mm -hmm. south but Gardner Webb does not have a big south title to their name yet so what's the plan and how are you going to get them that first uh, championship trophy I, we, we are not very big on sitting on talking about we're going to win this and do this and, and and really have you know making everything about wins and losses. I've been, I've been very, 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 very adamant about, you know, developing the culture, you know, being selfless, relentless, and blue collar, going about what we do every day in the right manner, and, and, and really understanding what it takes to be not only a great player, but a great 
16. Um, if we do all those things and we are meticulous about it and we are very, very, very determined to have an understanding of what we want to achieve, the wins are going to come and, and the culture will swing towards that championship culture. And it's going to, it's going to allow us to put ourselves in a position to do special things because what you want to do is you want to be playing your best baseball at the end of the year. Every, every coach says that it's very cliche, but I really believe to do that. It's a huge process. And we started that process back on July 1st when we were hired. And now we have the opportunities. We're going piece by piece and having an understanding that this is a marathon, not a sprint. And I'm excited to where we're at at this point. And I know if we continue to do these small little things, it will snowball and it's going to put us in a position to compete for championships. faith-based academics and also how does that affect you on the field and then does the faith-based curriculum play a role in recruiting at all yeah I, absolutely we uh you know our young men um are, have to be part of a program called dimensions and what it is it's actually a class for credit and what it is and it's a it's an outstanding um piece to our campus where our young men have to listen to speakers um of faith and, and uh, so many different angles. Maybe maybe somebody that went through hardship, um, or, or not, or someone from uh, you know faith based uh, you know initiative or, or their workplace or all, all kinds of different things. It's it's an, it's an it's an awesome awesome piece, um, and it is like I said a requirement in regards to um, you know their academic curriculum. I think that having the opportunity to let our um, players know that there, there, there's a strong Christian culture not only on campus but within our program, and then letting them know that you know we're very approachable from that from that point because you know our our, our faith um, is a big piece um, not only not only like I said on the field but then outside and in dealing with our players so it it, it, it is a big piece to our program you know I think that it's a huge selling point in recruitment and to understand that we we have a strong Christian culture. 
So you've been at a Division II program the past couple years, and now you're at a Division I program. For high school baseball players trying to figure out where do I fit, what's the difference between the caliber of a player, between a Division I guy and a Division II guy? You know, that, that's a tough question. Yeah. It, it is because there's just, there's just there's so many variables and so many different It's kind ends. of in the eyes of the beholder, right? I it mean, is. I had it Division is. Three is telling me that a kid might not be for them, and that kid goes to sign to the Division One program. 100%. So it's like, at that point, I'm just like, I, I, all right, I'm just going to show you the videos and you tell me what it is. Uh, I've had players at Penn State, Greater Allegheny, that can play Division One baseball. Right. And I've had guys at the Division Two level that would have better opportunities to get on the field at the Division Three level or other things. So. so would it be a good suggestion to tell guys who are struggling to figure out where it is they would fit to just do some different types of camps or showcases and see kind of what the feedback is and that will yeah. tell you where you fit? Yeah, I, here's my advice all the time as, I, as I've get, gotten a little older here and I've got friends that have, have children that are getting to the age of these different types of things I go. You know, instead instead of doing some of the other stuff, why, why don't you go to the top three dream schools? that you have when you're 15 years old. Top three, like if you wanna to go to Florida, UCLA, whatever, go to their camp. And if you're good enough, they'll, they'll, they'll have you, they'll chase you down in a parking lot. Right. You know, and you're gonna be able to figure that out a little bit. And I think as you work and, and go through that process and, and do what you need to do, like, I, I just feel like you're always, you're meant, you're, you end up where you're meant to be. Right. Do you know what I mean? So if you end up going to a Division three school, it's a great thing. And if you get drafted, then you know, hey, you should have a chip on your shoulder right. and have an opportunity. But you're a really good baseball player no matter where you play. Right. You are a good baseball player. A very good Division One coach in this state who I have such great respect for told me something that's really stuck with me. Um, that he said is great advice for players is that the market will speak for itself and the market will tell you what you are, whether you want to believe it or not. If, if the only teams coming after you are D2 teams in the Mid-Atlantic, then that's what you are. If you have D1 teams t chasing you from the Midwest, then that's what you are. You know? Yeah, and I, I think you could say that in life. Right. You know what I mean? The, yeah. mar the market's going to tell you where, where you belong. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, that's true. It's, it's a huge piece, and, and there's a lot. Like, you know what I mean? The chips will fall, and where they do, it, it's an awesome. Because I, I just explained, like, and I, I feel like sometimes I sell small college baseball more than the right. level that I'm currently at because I am an advocate for it because I had a great experience as a player. I think that our staff and where I've been before have provided great experiences. And you can just, just because UCLA doesn't offer you doesn't mean right. you can't have a great experience. Right. So a big reason that guys are playing college baseball is because they still have the dream, right? To play sure. pro baseball. Mm -hmm. So does playing, and again, you've been division one, division two, division three, uh, junior college, right? Yes. And also the USCAA. Correct. And so you've been at all of them, <laughs> right? Does playing at one level or another make a difference in a guy's chances to play at the pro level? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I you truly believe, like, if, you, if you're able to produce at the highest level, I think it gives you the, 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 the you're the most marketable to do what you need to do. And I think that, that you can play that in a lot of different avenues, too. Um, that, that, you know, I think that you've got a little bit tougher of a path if you play at a lower level, but but it's still very, it's been proven, it, it can definitely happen, and it happens a lot. Right. But I do believe that if you're able to go and produce against certain teams, programs, and uh, that level, and you're able to do it consistently, obviously that's gonna give you a, you know, much better chance to produce at that next level. So let me give you the situation then, the, the question that a lot of recruits have to ponder and it's a tough one right I can go to this division one school maybe not play mm -hmm. I can go to this division two school and get on the field right away well what's the advice well, you know what that's a tough one because I, I when I was at one place I had one answer and now when I'm in a <laughs> yeah you think a different one I, I uh I think that you know you have to find what's the perfect fit for you right. you've got to find where is the perfect fit in regards to the location the academic and then the baseball and then I think that's what really works out if you pick the right fit you're gonna have the best experience all right it's about waking up happy every day amen and then you'll be all right from there amen coach I appreciate you having us out here so much. appreciate Great you guys place, outstanding. Outstanding. Thanks outstanding so much thank you. no thank you